505 years ago on this day. It was Martin Luther who nailed the 95 Theses on the castle church door in Wittenberg, Germany, and that was the catalyst to get this reforming church to do the job of reformation. And we'll talk about that uh, this morning uh, in, in the sermon. I uh, want to, I don't know if you can see this, I have to start with this this morning. This is a heart, um, and this heart has been made out of a gun that came off the streets in Philadelphia. Uh, last, yesterday, the confirmation class went down to Raw Tools, Philadelphia, and they have a ministry of literally beating the, the swords into plowshares. So uh, we had a great day, a powerful day, and uh, we got all of the confirmation students uh, a, a little heart here for them. Uh, and I, th I think I'm going to wear it every Sunday, along with the cross, uh, Christ proclaiming love in this violent world in which we live in. But anyways, let us uh, get down to uh, business here with our Reformation service. Uh, our seminarian, Daniel Marone, will be leading us. Daniel. Please rise to the order of confession and forgiveness. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most That's okay. I thought I was going to have to start singing for a second. I was like, is this a... <laughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. that is Christ's gift to us, the love of God and the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace be with you all. 
and also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. the world for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord for your people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word let us pray to the Lord Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, bless the reading of your word. Make it come alive in our midst. Amen. The first reading is from the third chapter of Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. And now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. 
He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let's read responsibly Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams may fly the city of God, a holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. The nations rage and the kingdoms shake. God speaks and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now, the guard of the works of the Lord. What desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shield with fire. Be still, then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. According to Luke, the 19th chapter, glory to you. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome Jesus. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. The foundation of the Reformation is found in our, our Romans text this morning. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Contrast this very serious second lesson with the gospel this morning that to me sounds a little silly. So Zacchaeus ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Friends, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Tomorrow is Halloween, and of course there will be trick-or-treaters going out, which forces me to remember a very traumatic event in my childhood. I went trick-or-treating, I think I was about 10 years old. I was old enough to go without my parents, and I remember it like it happened last night. I was on Higgins Avenue just three blocks from home. It was near the end of the night and my bag was full of candy. And I remember turning around to say something to my friend when out of the night, a boy on a bike just appeared, snatched that bag of candy and rode off into the night. I just sat there in disbelief. Have you ever been the victim of a crime? It's, it's this, I don't, I don't believe this is happening. So much did I not believe it was happening that I fully expected this big bully to come back and give me back my candy. But the big bully never came back. He disappeared into the darkness. And there I stood on Higgins Avenue, candyless. There are days when I feel the same about the church. Here we go, a metaphor for the church, a bag of candy. <laughs> My bag of candy from that Halloween night 50 plus years ago. I love this church. This church I have served for for many years, the church has served me, but sometimes it feels like this church has been snatched out of my hands in the middle of the night and has disappeared. Think about the radical change we are going through in our life together. I used to do several baptisms in a year. This past year, I have done one. I used to do several weddings. In the past year, I have done one. I used to do several funerals. This past year, I have done two. Now, maybe that's good news, okay? I'm not asking <laughs> for more funerals, okay? But still, these religious rites are the common task of any parish pastor and these rites are becoming less and less, and the reason is simple. People are becoming fewer and fewer in the church. But here's the funny thing. There are days when I fully expect this church to come back. Looking into the distance, I said, yeah, I think if we just work a little bit harder, we can get back to those glory days of the church. But here's what I have to say on Reformation Sunday. This or that church is not returning. The church we knew is not coming back. I read a report from the Metro New York Senate of the ELCA addressing the stress and fragility of congregations in their synod. And it begins by saying that only a quarter of their churches are financially and programmatically stable. A quarter. I don't know about the New Jersey Synod, but I'm guessing our numbers are similar. But then it was surprising to me as the report highlighted the biggest obstacle in front of us. The biggest obstacle to effective change is truly owning and responding to the current fragile state of our congregations and our sin. Perhaps you know that in the 12-step program, the first step is I have a problem. The addict first has to own the problem before those next steps to recovery can ever happen. I hear that in this strategic report from Metro New York. 
if the church is expecting the old model of church to come back, those next steps of reformation will never happen. Our stewardship theme this fall is God's grace, now what? I wanted to say, so what? But Joan said, no, it sounds, that sounds a little too in your face. <laughs> but I wanted to get this sense of urgency. The sense of urgency not to frighten us, but to call us into this continual work of reformation. It is easy on this Sunday to get caught up in our past. We want to glorify the reformers. We want to celebrate our Lutheranism. And there is nothing wrong with marking the importance of this day for us. But my friends at Working Preacher this week said that Reformation Sunday is not a Sunday to celebrate as much as it is a call to action. There is a great line in the Metro New York a report that says God loves us just the way we are. Okay, there's God's grace. God loves us just the way we are, but God doesn't expect us to stay that way. Our Romans text proclaims grace. You are saved by grace. It is the gift of faith. But that grace demands a response. And so for 505 years, the Lutheran Church has been asking the question, now what? And today we ask it yet again. To reform the church, how do we proclaim grace and gospel in this wild world? world in which we are living through. The answer today for me is Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is not the assigned gospel for Reformation Sunday, but it is the assigned gospel for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost, which is today, by the way, okay? So I'm not breaking any rules. <laughs> but I'm just so struck by this, this very heavy, serious, wonderful Romans text and then we put in this, this story about Zacchaeus. You remember the, the song, the Sunday school song? Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore. And there, there, Audrey's doing the, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the actions for the world he won. Uh, and when the Savior came that way, he looked up on the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down. For I'm going to your house this day. For I'm going. Is this what we sing on Reformation Sunday? I mean, this silly song on this, this, this heavy day. Well, yes, it is. Because Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus. And I think uh, we have to say more than just because he was short. Remember, Zacchaeus was a tax collector. Daniel told us about the tax collectors last Sunday, but Zacchaeus is not just a tax collector, but he is the chief tax collector. A tax collector was an instrument for the empire, and Zacchaeus was a Jew. He was a son of Abraham. We hear that this morning. And so here is this Jew working for the oppressor amongst his own people. And to make matters worse, he's getting rich at the very same time. Zacchaeus has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But what does Zacchaeus want to do? Zacchaeus wants to see Jesus. So great that this authority of the Roman Empire climbs a tree, does a thing that a child does. But Zacchaeus doesn't care because he wants to see Jesus. I don't care how secular our world has become. I believe people want to see Jesus. Now, they're not going to name it as such. 
And they might be very vocal in their opposition to that word Christian or to the word Jesus, and yet they want the very thing that Jesus offers. I believe that people know they have fallen short and they just want to be accepted, not by merit, but by grace. People have that base desire to be loved. And so this morning, I am going to say that Zacchaeus is your friend out there in the world. Zacchaeus is your neighbor. Zacchaeus is that stranger on the street, and they all want to see Jesus. And so the task of the church is to show them. Jesus saw Zacchaeus right away. Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. Jesus eats with tax collectors and sinners. And what do the religious guys do? Or the crowd? What do they do? Something that they do all the time with Jesus. They grumble because Jesus has gone to the house of a tax collector. But why are they grumbling? Because what happens to Zacchaeus? He says, I'm going to give back half of my riches and give it to the poor. I'm going to go to those people and if I have defrauded them, I am going to make things right. That's what the gospel does in this world. It transforms us to live in this vision of the gospel. For too long the church has grumbled about our decline. We grumble about the people who are not here. I grumble about the people who are not here. We grumble about the church disappearing into the night. But we need to stop our grumbling. And we have to start showing the world Jesus. A Jesus who I believe they really want to see. God's grace, now what? Well, how about loving one another as Christ has loved us? God's grace, now what? Well, how about forgiving as we have been forgiving? God's grace, now what? How about practicing resurrection, embodying God's grace, getting caught up in what God is doing? I've said this, for the last number of years. I'm excited about this church, this reforming church. I'm excited to see what God is going to do. And I invite you on this journey that we are a church that seeks to show Jesus to the world. Amen.
as a whole church, let us confess, confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. Lord God, friend of those in need, your Son Jesus has untied our burdens and healed our spirits. We lift up the prayers of our hearts for those still burdened, those seeking healing, those in need within the church and the world. May our thankfulness and gratitude for the free gift of salvation by grace through faith in Christ extend beyond just this remembrance today of the Reformation. Implant it deep within our hearts that we may carry it with us at all times and in all places. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Create in us thankful hearts for the blessings which you bring us today and every day. We thank you for our health, our families, this worship community at Prince of Peace. We thank you for moments of joy, for laughter with friends, for beautiful weather and fall colors. Heal and cleanse our perception that we may see your blessings at all times and in all places, that we may praise your holy name. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Uphold those of your children who suffer the pain of doubt. Grant them the strength to endure these and all trials. Grant us all the wisdom to trust in the certainty of your promises. Assured of our salvation through faith alone, fill our hearts with peace, that we may share this peace with the world and proclaim with the Apostle Paul, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abide with those who are sick wherever they might be, at home or in the hospital. Fill their hearts with Christ's peace and bring swift healing to their afflictions, physical, psychological, spiritual. Comfort and heal those who suffer from addiction and substance abuse and make your love for them manifest in support from families, neighbors, and communities. <laughs> Guide the hands of doctors, nurses, surgeons, and all healthcare professionals. Most importantly, send us out into the world to do your work, to be with, comfort, and care for the sick, the mentally ill, those with disabilities, those who suffer addiction, and all who are in pain. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Abide with those in end-of-life care, especially those who are near the end of life but lack the support of families, friends, neighbors, and loved ones. Grant them Christ's peace and fix in their minds the image of your cross through which Christ once for all defeated death that it may no longer have power over us but we should instead have eternal life in his name. Comfort the hearts of those who grieve, hear their cries of lament, and fill them with the awareness of your loving presence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift up to your sovereign care our neighbors in Seoul, South Korea, as they mourn today. Abide with the families of the 150 people who lost their lives in a tragic crowd surge. Bring your healing touch to a nation of broken hearts as we grieve with them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift up to your sovereign care now the names of all those on our prayer list and those we name before you now in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord, you know what we need. You know our hearts even better than we do. We lift up our needs to you now. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
set free by your gospel of grace, empower and strengthen us also to live your gospel, to lead by example, to be a light in a world so dark, to speak truth in a world full of lies. Help us to be the gracious word of Christ's forgiveness extended to all, to be God's loving presence for those in need, and to be a servant to our neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear our prayers that we may love you with our whole being and willingly share the concerns of our neighbors. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with your neighbor.
receive the gifts for our day. God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing, and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Storytelling God, you had too much love within your Trinity to keep it to yourself. And so you made a universe in which to bring forth the earth, and an earth in which to raise up a people and a people in which to come among us in your Son, that we may know your purpose, never to be except to be with us in him forever. Through patriarchs and prophets, through women of courage and kings, through the redemption of failure and the transformation of faithlessness, you embodied your relentless will to abide with us. In the death and resurrection of your Son and the sending of your Spirit, you turned your covenant with your people into an invitation to all the world. And so we thank and praise you with angels on, and archangels singing your song of glory. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth filled with your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Inscribing God in Jesus, your word was made flesh, in your scriptures that flesh was made word. In your church and in your kingdom that word is made flesh again. By the power of your Holy Spirit, bring your scriptural promises to fulfillment in your people gathered in your name today. By that same Spirit, sanctify this bread and this cup that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, 
saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Inspiring God, you give us your scriptures for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, and for building us up in service to you and your world. Open your children's hearts each time your church opens your word of life. Send your spirit upon evangelists, teachers, preachers, and healers, that the wind and fire of Pentecost may thrill and transform your people today. Make your son's disciples feel their hearts burning within them, as you speak with them and they find their story in your story, until the day you draw us into your book of life and we are gathered between the covers of your glory, ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. Amen.
the next week, you're all going to be singing Zacchaeus was a wee little man. So. <laughs> Let us rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we may serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have a number of announcements for us today. First of all, we will be moving into the double classroom for Lutheranism 201 with Dr. Paul Rohrm looking at the large catechism. We've all uh, memorize the small catechism, but we will uh, delve into the large catechism. So we look forward to that now in uh, 10.45, in about 15 minutes or so. Uh, tonight, dinner church, even if you haven't signed up, you are, you are still welcome to come. And I hear there's plenty of food, so you can just, just show up. And that will be a word and sacrament uh, uh, worship experience. So five o'clock uh, in the community room. The pastor class on Wednesday, uh, Daniel, seminarian uh, Daniel Marone, will be doing a one-shot uh, class on Lutheran humor. So if you would like, if you haven't joined us and want to hear a little bit about uh, humor and Luther, uh, just let me know. That's a Zoom event, and I will send you an invitation to that event. Uh, tomorrow, I have to back up a little bit, Trunk or Treat at St. Bart's. Uh, I'm going down. I think a couple others might be going down. Joan, uh, it's, it's really a, quite an interesting and, and grace-filled experience uh, uh, in the parking lot there at, at St. Bart's. Uh, you can still bring some candy. Uh, uh, I'll be checking the bin tomorrow, and uh, we'll take that candy down there if you want to uh, donate some candy to that ministry. Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, and we will name the saints of this past year who have died uh, from this congregation, but also if you have a saint in your life that has died this past year and would like that person named, we will do so. Just simply email me uh, the, the, the name, and we will include it in our prayers for Sunday, next Sunday. And, believe it or not, Thanksgiving is, uh, it's what, the 30th, 31st, uh, Tuesday, November 1st, and of course Thanksgiving becomes front and center, and we again are going to be providing or helping to provide uh, baskets or boxes, as uh, Roberta says, uh, and that list is here in the bulletin along with the turkeys. Because of the turkeys, we've identified two drop-off dates Thursday, the 10th of November, and Saturday, the 12th. Uh, if you can't make it in those times, uh, just let me know or let Roberta know, and we can arrange for you to, to drop that, that box off. But we are trying, again, to, to, to get, I don't know, we're trying 25 boxes, Roberta? Anything else you want to share with that? Go ahead. Oh, and here comes the... A microphone so our friends online can hear. I just need to update you a bit on the turkey situation. We have found that uh, it's hard to find turkeys, uh, frozen turkeys, and sometimes when you do, they are very expensive. Uh, for example, I was at McCaffrey's yesterday and looked, and one young Tom turkey was $60. Whoa! Um, but uh, turkeys are great, but I talked to Pastor Eric about that situation, and in years past, they have had ham also on the list. So I said, can people, if they can't find a turkey, bring a ham? And he said, yes, so long as it's a large Ham. He said last year people put very small hams in, and he said it was more like spam than <laughs> But that is a viable alternative. Um, and you'll notice that you can just tear out the back sheet of the bulletin and have that list available. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. Other announcements? Uh, Nancy. It's the church's soul, and it's just blue. It's, it's, it's no designs or anything. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, the Thanksgiving weekend is the uh, first Sunday of Advent. Yeah, yeah. both of those gifts uh, in the near future, hopefully Great. in a couple Sundays. Well, thank Great. you. You're welcome. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I meant what I said that, uh, you know, I, I love serving the church, but uh, the church has also served me, you know, uh, financially, just in being a very generous, uh, I look at what uh, the health insurance costs, <laughs> you know, and, and I do not take that for granted, but just the whole spirit, and it's, 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 a, it's, it's a collective, collaborative uh, effort by this congregation to, to really deal with these uh, challenging times. So thank you for your faithfulness. I 
I've always said ministry is a partnership. That's how I've understood it my entire ministry. And as I shared with the council, I sit with a lot of pastors in direction this day, these days, and their hearts are literally broken because their people are not partnering with them in this new day of church. So um, I know I can speak for Peter as well when I say we are beyond grateful for your partnership and for your faithfulness to the gospel and for your openness to be a new church, whatever that's going to be in this new day. So thank you for remembering us. Thank you. Thank you, Tiff. And let us rise for the benediction. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love.